fish are coming! Hey everyone, I'm Philip and this is Love Island The Morning After. We have so much to talk about today. These last couple of episodes just go to show you that everything can change within 24 hours in Love Island. We have a new Islander, we have new love interests, and we have plenty of tears. We started with a game of sexy roulette. The Islanders had to spin the roulette wheel and either do a kiss or a dare. One of the first kisses to happen was between Connor and Moira. Hugh McKenzie getting all kinds of jealous, even though it was literally a peck on the lips. It was so nothing and reminder, it's just a game. Connor was then picked a little bit later and he had to do a dare and a three-way kiss between Rachel and Justine. Now, if I was on the island, I'd just go ahead and make out with people. I'd just be like, right, this is a dare. We're here to have fun. Let's do it. And it's a game. So everyone should just behave as if it's a game. But Mackenzie was having none of it. He literally got in between the girls and give them the slightest peck and she was livid. <sighs> there was a couple of really great could only happen in Love Island conversations on this episode. Moira and Calvin are getting to know each other and they had a conversation and one of the things Calvin said to Moira was like, oh, you look really great without makeup on. <laughs> And Moira was like, oh my God, I love that you love me without makeup on. It really reminded me of the scene in Mean Girls when Regina George says to Katie, you're really pretty. And Katie replies, oh, thank you. And then she says, so you agree? You think you're really pretty? It was just that kind of moment of Moira being like, I realize that I'm beautiful without makeup on and I love that you noticed that. <laughs> it was classic Love Island. We had the first of many tears from Mackenzie. It was the day after the game with the roulette table and Connor pulled Mackenzie aside to try and have a conversation and explain what had happened and how he was pretty much all in with Mackenzie. Mackenzie fully overreacted and was like, I can't believe I'm so blindsided, yada, 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 bawling with tears. She's then in the confessional talking about how she felt so blindsided and how Connor came out of nowhere with this information and how he wasn't really good at explaining himself. As a viewer, I'm watching it thinking, Connor couldn't have been more clearly. He's literally coming to you to make sure your feelings are okay. And you're reacting in a way that it's completely out of nowhere. It wasn't, it was understandable. And Connor was totally in the right here. Mackenzie, get a grip. A recoupling was announced and we were told that two of the boys would be leaving. Given the situation between James and Moira, and Moira now getting to know Calvin, James pulled Moira aside. Watching it, it felt like a really staged conversation, like the producers had said, can we have a moment where you two talk it out? Because James was asking Moira whether she'd come to a decision, and Moira's like, yeah, I'm still unsure. She couldn't have been more uninterested. She was absolutely sure she was going for Calvin. There was no way she was going for James. She had made her feelings quite clear and her reaction towards James in this situation was, I'm not interested, thank you, please leave. We ended the episode on the recoupling and we had four obvious couples who we knew were gonna pick each other. We had Johnny and Sally, Carrington and Kirsten, Trey and Justine, and troubled Irish law firm, Connor and Mackenzie. The decision then lied with Moira and Rachel to pick between the four boys, James, Calvin, Caleb, and Jeremiah. Rachel went first and she went ahead and picked Caleb. And then Moira went ahead and picked Calvin. For me, no surprise. As I said, she showed little to no interest in James earlier in the episode. Jeremiah and James were day oneers, so obviously there was gonna be a ton of tears and Everyone was crying, mostly the boys, which was really surprising. Jeremiah broke down, he was like, this is a brotherhood. It was very bro -y crying, but I kind of love that stuff. There's nothing hotter than a man that cries. Except, I will say, Calvin crying. He'd basically been in the house for like 48 hours and he's like, Bruh! crying his eyes out. It, that was weird. Everyone else, understandable, they've been together for a week. Calvin, rein it in. Episode seven was possibly my favorite episode to date. 
we learned that there was gonna be a new Islander coming in and her name is Lauren. And obviously I love her already because she's British, so yay the Brits. Anyone who watches Dancing with the Stars, do you think she looks a bit like Peter Megatroid? She's like the brunette version of Peter. And for anyone who doesn't know, Peter is my ultimate girl crush. Have a gay boy crush on her, 100%. She's beautiful. So obviously I think Lauren is stunning. It was really funny when they all started coming out of the bedroom and everyone's like, mm, morning, like full on morning face. And Justine comes out in the garden, she's like, <gasps> There's a new girl and quickly runs back into the bedroom. It's clear straight away that all of the boys think Lauren is a smoke show. They're all trying to play it cool because they're all partnered up in the villa. But you can see all the guys are like, oh, Shylock, oh, oh, I'm, I'm not looking at her putting her sunscreen on and I'm not interested whatsoever. <laughs> I loved the whole situation around the Islanders discovering that Lauren was British. And they're all like, oh my God, I love your accent. And Lauren goes, yeah, I'm British. In a very, very British accent, which I think she might be hamming that up a little bit because she knows that being British makes her more attractive in here because she's like, ooh, exotic. You can tell straight away which girls feel very comfortable in their relationship. Sally's just like, yeah, I'm with Johnny, no big deal, playing it totally cool. Whereas Mackenzie is straight away on the defensive and she tells Lauren, yeah, me and Connor made it official yesterday. Did you? Because none of us saw that and I don't think Connor knows this. All of the girls are furiously beating their face with makeup because they're like, this girl's beautiful, we've got to look beautiful, beat our face. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> The boys are all chatting in the dressing room and they all decide that they're gonna be real gentlemen and show Lauren around the villa. So they show her around and Lauren's like, oh, I'd love to have a coffee. Does anyone wanna make me one? Connor's like, yeah, I'll do it. And Trey's look was all of us during it. He's like, because he knows that Connor is interested and Connor cannot stop staring at Lauren. Lauren is then asking all the boys the situations with the couples and then Lauren says to Connor, oh, well, you know, Mackenzie just told me you made it official and Connor's like, um, well, no, um, not really. Uh, you know, we kind of, yeah, I guess we're sort of official. Connor is so blindsided by this and the reaction to it tells me that he is interested in Lauren. The boys are all chatting and they're talking about who might be interested in Lauren. They all pull Connor about the fact that he didn't straight away say Mackenzie was his girlfriend. And as they said, and as we knew as viewers, that shows that he's interested because if he wanted Mackenzie to be his girlfriend, he would have just said, oh yeah, I'm with Mackenzie, she's my girlfriend. He's fully leaving himself open to get to know Lauren. Meanwhile, Mackenzie, we're gonna have the I'm not threatened count. She says, oh yeah, I'm not threatened. I mean, she's great and she seems really great. I've known her for five seconds, but I'm not threatened. I'm not threatened. Yeah, no, I'm not threatened. She says it five times, which uh, the lady doth protest too much. Lauren is slowly making her way around all of the boys, getting to know them as she should as the New Islander. She pulls Carrington aside and they have quite a long chat. The girls are all together and Kirsten is saying, oh, this conversation's going on a little bit too long. And then starts to cry. <sighs> so many tears especially for couples that have known each other for a week. We do have some sad news. One of my favorite couple looked to be over. Trey pulled Justine aside and he basically said to Justine, you know, I'm only interested in you and I just want to get to know you so you don't have anything to worry about with Lauren. Then Justine said, oh, you know, actually, I fall for people really quickly and I'm just not feeling it with you, so you should get to know Lauren. Trey obviously wastes no time and he's like, Q, I'm gonna go and get to know Lauren, moving on. A couple of days earlier, all of the boys were very much like, we're coupled up, we're in solid relationships, you know, nothing's gonna turn our eye. And in true Love Island style, as soon as there's someone new who's very beautiful, all of the boys suddenly change their tune and are like, well, I know I'm coupled up, but I'm not in a relationship. It has only been a week. So I do want to get to know new people. Mm-hmm. Love Island classic. We roll on to the evening and the Islanders are having evening drinks when they get a text. 
The text says that America has been deciding on who Lauren should go on a date with. The text comes through, America has voted and they've decided that you should go on a date with Connor. <gasps> it was my first scream at the TV of the season because this is the kind of stuff I love on Love Island. Obviously I want people to find love, but the reason we all love Love Island is because of the drama and the turmoil and just the viewers messing with the Islanders. We all know that this is gonna cause so much drama and that's the kind of stuff that we wanna see. And of course, in true Mackenzie fashion, she storms off, she's losing it, and then bursts into tears. Why would America do this to me? Why? He's my boyfriend, Burr. That's why, Mackenzie, because you've decided he's your boyfriend without even expressing it to Connor. Connor just thinks that you're dating and getting to know each other and he's expressed that he wants to stay with you, but as soon as you've said, he's my boyfriend, all of a sudden you're putting a ring on it before he's even had a choice to get down and propose. Lauren then has the choice of two other islanders who she wants to go on a date with, and she picks Johnny and Carrington. Kirsten is obviously very insecure and thinks that Carrington might be interested in Lauren. Whereas Sully is like, yeah, I've got this. And she's like, yeah, I'm irreplaceable, so whatever. Love Sully. She's so great and I love that she's so confident in herself. We're left to see what happens on the next episode with all of the dates. Truthfully, I cannot wait to see what happens. Not that I want couples to break up, but it really does make the show interesting. And the addition of Lauren was much needed. Very excited to see what's gonna happen on the next episode. Make sure to come and join me next time. Like and subscribe on Instagram and YouTube. I'll see you next time. Take care guys.